hello there welcome back again to xfinity today i will show you how to render adobe premiere pro in adobe media encoder we will learn how to export from adobe premiere pro to adobe media encoder along with the best export settings basic advantage of using adobe media encoder is to reduce the final output size the video format will be mp4 directly and the rendering speed will be much faster so let's see how to do this all right fellas in this video we are going to see how we can export the adobe premiere pro projects directly into the adobe media encoder and the basic advantage of using the adobe media encoder is the final render size is much smaller and the rendering speed of the adobe media encoder is much faster as compared to the adobe premiere pro all right let us dive straight into the adobe premiere pro and let me show you what are the settings that you need to do to create a dynamic link between the adobe premiere pro and the adobe media encoder uh, to export the adobe premiere pro projects directly into the adobe media encoder all right so let us dive straight into the adobe premiere pro and let me show you how to do this all right fellas so as you can see i am right inside my adobe premiere pro 2020 as you can see i have uh, my editing done and uh, now i will try to export it using adobe media encoder all right so first of all what you need to do you need to first of all edit your videos make a nice timeline edit your videos that you as you want and then you need to go to file and then navigate to export and select media once you select media it will show you the export settings and uh, now if you are going to export the project of adobe premiere pro using media encoder you don't need to adjust settings here because we are going to adjust the settings in the adobe media encoder all right output module of the adobe media encoder is similar to the uh, adobe premiere pro export settings but the difference only here is the rendering speed of the adobe premiere pro is much slower as compared compared to the median quarter and the final output size of the adobe median quarter is much smaller as compared to the adobe premiere pro all right so for this you don't need to change anything here we are going to do this in the adobe median quarter and you need to simply click on the queue now what it will do it will try to create a dynamic link between the adobe premiere pro and the adobe media encoder and uh, your project will be rendered into the adobe media encoder So as you can see it successfully created the dynamic link between the adobe premiere pro and the adobe media encoder and you can see the output module here in the adobe media encoder and now you simply need to click here whatever you can see here while you are exporting your videos just click on this and it will show you the export settings just like in the adobe premiere pro and you can apply any settings you want you can go to the format and select h.264 i recommend to use h.264 because it is for the youtube and the facebook if you are going to upload the video on youtube and facebook you can go with h.264 and if you have the latest version of uh, adobe premium pro 2022 that i am going to make a video on it soon you can select h.265 because it is compatible in the newer versions so you need to select h.264 and select this and after that you can also select your presets from here and if you're going to upload a video on youtube you can select youtube 1080p full hd or you can select youtube 2160p 4k all right you can select any version you want all right and you can also create your own custom presets so i recommend to use match source hybrid rate or you can select youtube resolution as you want the next thing here is the output name you can select the output directory where you want to export your videos i'm going to export it directly into the desktop once you're done with the name and the directory you can simply click on save and after that make sure you select both of these options export video and export audio it will export both the video and the audio in your uh, desired project and the next thing is uh, the video and uh, here you mean you need to make sure the frame rate is not below the 60 all right so uncheck this option and uh, select 60 in this uh, list because it is very important to make your videos very smooth also make sure to select render at maximum depth 
make sure the encoding settings is selected as hardware encoding the performance should be hardware encoding do not select software encoding because it is very slow and it will not use your gpu all right so i highly recommend to use the hardware encoding after that keep everything as it is it is very simple and linear and another important setting is bitrate settings you can select any setting here you want but i recommend to use vbr one pass because it is too much compatible with the hardware encoding or decoding if you select cbr it is not compatible with the hardware encoding and uh, also with the case of vbr 2 pass because there are some issues that i face so i recommend to use vbr 1 pass but if you want to switch you can do this there is no problem and uh, the next important th thing here is the target bitrate you need to make sure the bitrate is 20 to 25 because if you're going to make it as high as possible it is not going to matter if you want to upload the video on youtube or facebook they will use their own encoders and they will convert your 50 mbps into the 20 or 25 so that's why you don't need to waste your total bit rates just uh, select 20 to 25 and that's fine keep everything very simple as you can see i have shown you in this video and uh, also select use the maximum render quality and uh, you are done once you are done you can simply click on the ok button and uh, then once you are done with your settings you can simply click on this icon here start queue and once you click on this it will start rendering your videos and you can see the speed of the rendering is very fast the rendering speed is very fast that's why i recommend to use adobe media encoder as compared to the adobe premiere pro and uh, that's the advantage if this is exporting your final project you can go back directly to the adobe premiere pro and you can continue to work on your editing so it is flexible to use and you can do this easily as i have shown you in this video so that's it guys in my next video i will show you what are the basic updates that adobe, adobe premiere pro is going to show you in their second version 2022 version so stay tuned and don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel if you like this video and hit the bell icon and uh, comment down below if you face any problem all right and donate to my channel if you want to it really makes a difference and uh, thank you so much again for watching this video have a nice day